In a wooded acreage by Bragg Creek live Bob and Rhonda Osnes. Their ranch-style home is carefully decorated with treasures that have accrued over many years. Knick-knacks, wall hangings, and ornaments have a story that connects their family of 17 with their heritage and traditions. At the heart of such nostalgia is the love of Jesus that followed Bob's family from Norway to the Camrose area and that accompanied Rhonda's great-grandparents as they relocated from Indiana to Zion, North Dakota. Rhonda's ancestors who made this trek transported their own blacksmith, teacher, doctor, and preacher as they homesteaded and established a community in a new place. All that now remains of that original settlement is the graveyard that many of Rhonda's relatives still live nearby in the town of Kandu, North Dakota. It is from a descendant of this group that Rhonda's story begins, that is, with her grandma, Fannie Mae. One year I was going to skip some of the decorations and the kids said, where's that? Where's that decoration? So I don't skip anything anymore. If it was there from when they were little enough to understand it, yeah. I keep doing it because that's what they remember. That's yeah. what they look for. Oh, once a year, here it is. So if we did this yeah. 50 years from yeah. now, what would they say? Right. What would they bring out? Because this is my grandma's. So. And yes. you know what? This story, I don't think many of my kids or my grandkids or even Bob knows it. Well, I want to hear it. Yeah. Can you bring that up and we'll have a look at it? Okay. Can I take this oh, off? Yeah. Wow, look at that. Okay, tell me this story. So what this is, Elaine, this was always in my grandmother's home. And she kept it in the guest bedroom where I would stay if I was a little girl and would visit. And at that time, we didn't have a lot of fancy things. Right. I grew up in a farming community and everyone was hardworking. And my grandmother really didn't either. She was just a Simple. bread and butter, keep the house, yeah. you know, and she grew up on a farm and loved horses. But this was always in her house, and I was always intrigued from little up, like as long as I can remember, that's what I would always look at. And she would let us look at it and hold it. But what it is, it's a perfume bottle. Oh. This was filled with perfume. <laughs> and it's a heart in hands. And then it has this dome over top to keep it protected. And the name of the perfume, it's still on there, it's called Forever Yours. Mm -hmm. So my, my grandmother would say, you can look at it, but be very careful because it's a heart. And hearts can break. Mm -hmm. Just like she said, our hearts can break if mm -hmm. somebody hurts us or some Thing happens. Oh. So she said that's why we hold, it's held gently in some hands that care for the heart and this is other protection. Just like Jesus protects us wow. if our hearts are broken. Wow. And I never ever forgot that. So you know you grow up, life goes on and you move away and my this grandmother. What was her name? Fannie Mae Llewellyn. Oh, just like the Fanny made chocolate. Fanny's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was always attracted to that grandmother because she was nurturing and caring. And my parents said I was their favorite. So probably that's kind of another reason. Okay. And I stayed at their house a lot. So this grandmother was the first of my grandparents to pass. She died early at 62 years old. Oh. Yeah, she had cancer. And I remember visiting her. And, and so she... I. That happened when I was in the fifth grade. So oh, I didn't have many years with her, really. Right. Um, so then life goes on, you move away, you grow up. And um, over the years, Bob and I found ourselves in a transition when we were married with three of our children. You know, they were young. Mm -hmm. And we found ourselves moving from Alberta to Montana. And things just, we were just in a huge transition. What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. So we went to my parents back in North Dakota, and we thought we'll just stay there for a month and decide as Bob searched for another job. As it turned out, the Lord provided him with the insurance job that started there. And okay. at the same time, 
an opening in their little tiny rural hospital open for me in the lab. Oh, wow. So then the problem was, where do we live? So my dad inherited my, these grandparents' home, and so we were able to move into my grandparents' house. Wow. So this house I moved into wow. with my own children. Wow. And nothing had hardly changed in the house. So there was a few things we brought in, the piano, and, you know, my mother had a few things. But honestly, it stayed furnished. Wow. Even some of my grandmother's weird little knickknacks and dishes, okay. they were there. Wow. And they were still there when we went to live. Wow. So the absolute blessing to me about this piece one day I was in the house putting things away. It was an old style home that had an attic, you know, with a yes. steep stair and the door yes. that had a weight on it that yes. you had to let down. And the attic was, you know, canning jars and old coats and mm -hmm. suitcases. And so I, I took something up there to put away. And I thought I should look around up here a little bit. I found an old box of canning jars and newspapers. And in the corner under the newspapers was this. Oh. And it was not broken. It wow. was exactly the same condition it was that I remembered. And I thought to myself, I'm the one that needed to find this. Yes. And that would have been in 1984. Wow. And then I've had it ever since. But you were the keeper of the story. I was the one that was meant to find it. Yes. Yeah. But and you know, has... why is it when we look back, the things that mean the most to me that are closest to my heart tend to be with my grandparents. Me too. Now, why are they so special? Not only that, but I've learned the stories of my great-grandparents through my father. Yeah. And they become my heroes. I, and it's because I didn't know them. I didn't know when they were fussy or when they were upset. or I didn't know that. I just know their story and their faith story is what is so so strong. This grandma that you're, you're talking about, what was her story? We grew up in a church of the brethren. Oh. So the town that they created was completely built out of nothing from people who came from Indiana. So they came together. Okay. I don't know if it was a wagon train. I, I think then it was a train. Okay. But they brought a blacksmith, their pastor, a doctor, educators, and um, teacher. Did I say that? No. Well, educators. Yeah. They all came together. They formed a little town called Zion. So that Zion was their community, and that's where they started. Then as they got older, it kind of disappeared. Oh. But that was the community. And so they were Church of the Brethren, which would be similar to Mennonite. What would be the difference then between, say, the, the little white Lutheran church in the country and the Brethren church? What, what do you notice that was different? The main, the main difference? They were Anabaptists. Okay. So infant baptism was Lutheran. Our baptism was as we got older. Okay. That's the major difference. If you're going to be baptized, you need to have a salvation experience. Uh, oh, yeah. And so how did they make sure that their children were exposed to that? Was it through Sunday school or did they bring So an we had an evangelist come every year, That's right. annually, for a whole week. So how old were you when you were baptized? Third grade. Third grade. So do you remember yeah. when you, you made that decision to be baptized? Yes. Really? Tell me about So you that. know what? You're singing. You have all the... the we, had, we had an artist that came with the evangelist. His wife was an artist with painted flannel. Yes. Flannel yes. graph. And yes. she would add... Flannel stories. I remember those well. Wow. So she would do that, and the kids would gather around and listen, and then he would have a, 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 a message about salvation. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they were a bit scary. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. don't do that anymore. No. I remember. <laughs> and some were different. Yeah. But the pastor who came when I chose to really accept Jesus as my own Savior, 
He was a kind man. Yes, of course. And he said, and I remember he said, if you feel something inside your body that's tugging and you want to just step out, that's the Holy Spirit telling you, mm -hmm. now it's your time to come and say, mm -hmm. I believe this, I want to follow Jesus. And then our church had a full baptistry. So we had a full immersion baptism. Okay. So then at the end of the week, all those who did that come forward, mm. we had a service of baptism. Wow. There's something wonderful about, about that because you've made that connection of how your baptism is really, you know, the Holy Spirit comes on you and you're baptized. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was first generation Christians. They, yeah. None of them were baptized yeah. as children. You know, it's interesting that you were in the third grade. So was I. Really? Um, it was Easter, and the television that we had was showing pictures of the crucifixion. And I just, I just sat there and wept. Yeah. I just wept. And, and again, that stirring in your heart of, wow, what love that you had. And it's not that I didn't have any experience of knowing God or Jesus. I was, I was brought up in the church and I, right. I really, it meant a lot to me and the stories meant a lot to me. But at that moment, it was as though the Lord was talking to me and my mother, God bless her, noticed that I was weeping. And she looked at me and she goes, Elaine, what's, what's wrong? And I just said, I'm just so sad. And she saw what I was watching, and she took me into my room, and she sat down with me, and she said, would you like to invite Jesus into your heart? And I said, yes, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And so she prayed with me, and she said, things will be different now. Rhonda showed us a, a tiny perfume bottle, precious to Rhonda in part because it connects her with her grandmother and the love that was there. Love and beautiful fragrances or perfume are, are connected. When we think of roses, delicate red petals, but also the uh, delicate, subtle, pleasant fragrance of a rose. It's not overpowering. It's not strong. And it tells us a, a something about the nature of love. And thinking about the fragrance of roses leads me to think about the gospel story of Mary of Bethany. We read this. She anointed Jesus' feet with this perfume, and it says that the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. And that fragrance then communicated her devotion and her love toward Jesus. There is a parallel story in the Gospel of Luke, where uh, Jesus is visiting at the home of a Pharisee and having dinner with him. And uh, there is a, a woman who, who finds her way into the house who has a very bad reputation. And we read there that she stood behind Jesus by his feet, weeping, and she began to bathe his feet with her tears and to dry them with her hair. Then she continued kissing his feet and anointing them with the ointment, this costly ointment man who had invited Jesus there was uh, critical of Jesus for allowing her to do that. But Jesus said to him, I tell you, her sins, which were many, have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven, loves little. So today during Advent, we're thinking this week especially about love something that we first experienced as uh, newborn infants as we looked up and saw the face of our mother and looked into her eyes and heard her voice and experienced the love of, of, of our mothers for us and 
were held by our mothers. And that's how, as humans, we first came to know about love. There is a great de description of this love. 1 John chapter 4, 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. This is Paul's prayer. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen.